I thought it was perfect. But Linux Mint does one thing that is completely, thoroughly, and totally crazy. Let's talk about that and how to fix it. Thanks for checking out this Switched to Linux video. And today we want to talk a little bit about Linux Mint. I thought this thing was perfect. In all reality, as I decided to leave Windows behind and switch to Linux, I, of course, like a lot of people in that era a while back, tried out Ubuntu first. Not everybody did. And it worked and it was functional. I thought, well, it was kind of neat, but I really didn't like the way at that time Unity worked as a desktop environment. I was new to Linux. I didn't know there were other options. I was actually trying plugins to put a panel on the bottom and try and make my workflow jive with how I ran it on Windows because I have used Windows, I have used Mac, and I just like the workflow I like. Whether or not you agree with me or not, eh, that's a different matter altogether. But that being said, Linux Mint, when I first found it, it was absolutely incredible. To me, it was easy. It was highly functional. It was familiar, low, perfect, which is why it became my default build for my streaming computer when I started running the YouTube channel itself and my work computer and most of the other computers that I have the option and I don't want to run like Arch to test out the latest software and things like that. But the reality is Linux Mint does have one serious fundamental problem with it. And we're going to talk about that today. That is languages. Linux Mint has this little problem that should be easy to solve. You see, when you're setting it up, one of the options is to say, what language is this computer? And what it should do is it should remove all languages and locales except the one that you chose. But it doesn't. And because it doesn't, other software gets installed, like LibreOffice, and then it looks at the locales you have, and it decides to download help documents, language packs, spell checkers, hyphenation guides for every locale in there. Did you know that if you're running Linux Mint and you have not proactively cleaned out the languages, you are running half a gigabyte of unnecessarily language files on your system. That is how big it is. It is insane how many language files it runs. This is one fundamental problem. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to walk you through how to fix this. So I'm recording this actually on my production laptop here. Uh, this is the one that I always run the more recent, more edge versions. So this one's at 21.2 and eventually I'll put it at 21.3. So as of right now, if we go ahead and we look at our folders, our folders are pretty full. Now this does have a fairly small file system as it is. And so um, I forget how big this, I think it's a 256 gig as I think is the, the total size. And there is a lot of space on here, but I've never actually cleaned out the language. Well, at least I hope I haven't because I just tested it out on two different computers today. And I'm hoping that uh, this one, it is not, uh, I didn't clean them out already. So we'll see. So first we're gonna go in and Linux Mint has a languages application. And this is a setting inside your settings panel that looks at the languages installed. Now, you might have actually seen a system report about languages. You can see here that our language is US English across, and then there's applied system wide is US English. Now, if you go and look at the install and remove languages, you're going to need to enter your password there. And then what you're going to see is. See that it says 23 languages installed. Now, these are all variations on English, but over here in the United States, we speak United States English. I do not need Zim, uh, Zimbia, Zambia's English, Zimbabwe's English, New Zealand's English, Canadian's English, A, Australian's English, 
Uh, Antiquita Barbuda English. Botswana. They speak English. Okay. Well, whatever. I thought... With not the clicky language? I don't know. I don't know. So first step is we're going to go in and you literally, and there's no mat batch selection. So you have to come in and just highlight each one and remove each one of them. Fortunately, it is a pretty quick process. This is going to prevent all of these separate languages and other things from being installed. Now, is it just these? No, because LibreOffice on Linux Mint also installs other languages that are not necessarily in this list. And that's the next thing we're going to have to deal with. So first, we're just removing all of these language packs. Now, curiously, it does say, notice there that it says that some language packs are missing. And so if you actually go and click on those, it's going to try and install other languages that are not necessarily part of English. So if we go ahead and hit install language packs and let it update its cache, and then it's going to say, hey, we're going to download some software. Do you want to do this? What we're actually going to see is the down, the, ins, the, the software list it's going to give us is actually going to be, um, here's GIMP help common. Okay, understand that. Hyphen phi, this is the, fin, uh, the Finnish hyphenation language. This is uh, GA. Which one was GA? I forget which one GA was. I think it was the Irish, believe it or not, or something like that, or Scottish or something, and I didn't look up what the ID one is. Uh, but it's still trying to install language packs that are not specifically English United States, so we don't really care about those. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to boot up Synaptic Package Manager because this is really the only spot I know of to clear all of these out easily because what happens is LibreOffice on Linux Mint also installs a ton of extra stuff. And so what we're going to do is I want to go ahead and come in here and we're going to search for LibreOffice. So this is going to pull up every package file that is related to LibreOffice. So you see here's your fonts open symbol is installed and you see Hunspell DE at Frammy. This is the German, Australian German language dictionary. Now, Hunspell is the application that you need for spell checking. But believe it or not, I do not need Austria's German spell checking. I think I said Australian. No, it's Austrian German. I do not need Switzerland, Germany either. So literally, this is what, unfortunately, we're going to have to do is you're going to need to go through here and deselect every language you don't need. Here's all of the English ones that are irrelevant, except this one here is United States uh, English American Dictionary. I want to keep that. I don't need the Australian English Dictionary. I'm afraid a crocodile will get me. I don't need Canadian English, A. Eh? I don't need this English with my crumpets and tully. Um, I do not need South... Uh, South African language. I know Elon Musk will be sad about that. Nor do I need the Spanish English because, well, never mind. I was going to say something about some border wall, but I don't want to get political here. <laughs> All right. uh, we don't need Italian as much as I like my pizza. Uh, we don't need Brazilian as much as I might like to go to Carnival. Uh, Portugal, no. This lands is conquered by Christopher Columbus. We certainly don't want to beat Russians, Putin, uh, Putin's spy. So let's get Russia, rid of Russian as well. Um, I don't need a German. Uh, and, okay, now we're in hyphenation patterns. So this is how do these various nations hyphenate things. So I don't need to know how Great Britain hyphenates things. I don't need to know how France hyphenates things. This is a problem, Linux Mint. All of this stuff should not be here because I've selected English as my primary language. So I don't know. Maybe we all need to write mass reports to say, can we get rid of everything or at least have like a language removal tool that removes everything not per pertinent to our specific language? Okay, we need that. We need that. We need that. Uh, don't worry. We're not done yet. Just kind of flip on through here. Here's your core. Here's your core. Dev core common. Uh, because we're going to get down to the help guides now. The help guides actually get pretty big. If I actually put these package size, can I put the package size on this thing? Okay. Uh, the, these help these uh, these files here are like 20, 30 megabytes each for these help files. Here is the help files in German. Uh, Spicken Sie Deutsch? Uh, no. 
what did I say? I don't know. <laughs> Great British help documents. Uh, American English is fine. I do not need uh, documents, say, in Espanol. Uh, VV, go, go, go away. Uh, Mamma mia, he's deleting the Italian help guides. I mean, this is crazy that Linux Mint has all this kind of stuff installed by default. This is Brazilian, Portuguese, here's Russian. Now, I get that all these are options, and they should all be options. Um, but what it should do is it should remove anything that's not pertinent to this default language that we've selected. Uh, now we have, here's some German, um, I don't even know what these ones are. There's more language packs. So some of these want us to remove everything else, which some of these things that we're going to ask to be removed are already marked for removal. So we are going to mark all this kind of stuff for removal. Just make sure we don't hit the United States English. And now we have the thesauruses. I don't even speak these languages. I don't know why I would possibly need a thesaurus in them. And now we're just going to do a final check. I just want to make sure in, in my zeal I didn't get rid of United States English something that I might happen to need. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and hit apply. And then you will see this is going to clear up 431 megabytes of space that I am getting rid of just in unnecessary language packs. Why, Linux Mint? Why are you installing so many language packs when I selected English as my language? So ultimately, this shouldn't be difficult. I've seen this on several different distributions on the installation. Once you go ahead and install, you'll actually see for Ubuntu, if you watch the little thing and get the details on install, removing language packs, removing language packs. That's what Linux Mint needs to do is it needs to add a function to remove the language packs or give us a language pack removal tool that's going to remove everything not related because this is a 256 gigabyte disk 450 megabytes is a lot of space on a disk such as this. And so here we're going to, let's close that out. And let me go ahead and look back to our file size here. And we have certainly saved some, some file uh, size there. It doesn't actually look, look much different, but let's have a look. So, you can see though that we did we did actually carve out 450 megabytes, which is is fair enough um, of space out of there. So that is the process and the steps. Now there might still be more language packs in here. I am unaware of, uh, but as far as just doing a cursory examination, uh, mostly getting frustrated with this today and remembering it was there again as I was updating a system, going wait. Why is it installing or updating all of these language packs? And I don't really need it to. Well, the reality is um, uh, I just wanted to make sure that uh, I cleared out everything that I saw upgrading. I think that is actually it. But, hey, there's a good way to clear off a whole bunch of stuff off of your system in the event that you are um, uh, in the event that you are. Uh, are running low in space or just like to de-bloat your systems. Why Mint doesn't do that out of the box is so totally beyond me. But hopefully this gave you a tip about taking care of that. With that, thank you guys for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.